the floor. This feels so good, but so strange just because I haven't done it in so long. But my last vlog was obviously me moving in and now I've been here for like a month and a half and I feel like so much has changed in just a month and a half, which makes me realize how pivotal this decision was. Little like rundown of like what's happened so van left yesterday he came basically to help me move stay for the holidays and a little longer and thinking back to when he came and when we were packing the moving truck and doing all that versus like this moment right now that feels like years apart <laughs> Like not just a month and a half, years. Honestly, a change in environment is exactly what I needed and what I think, or honestly no, believed to be true for a lot of people. Like a lot of people need this. And the thing is, there's not, it's not to say there's anything bad or like wrong with my old environment. You know, it doesn't always have to be like toxic or so terrible, even though I know it is for a lot of people, that wasn't the case for me. But still, I outgrew that environment and I started to notice it affect me and my growth. I'm the kind of person that like every month, every two months feels like a year to me in, you know, internally, how much I've grown, how much I have changed and shifted, you know, my mindset and healed certain beliefs. Like it happens very quick for me and I notice when it isn't. So I notice when my growth is at like a standstill and I was feeling that a couple months ago. There's nothing scarier than that for me. Growth is extremely scary and uncomfortable, but not nearly as scary and, as, and uncomfortable as not growing, as noticing yourself just, I don't know, just not like changing and evolving at the speed that you know you can. And I think that's, oh, I know that's why this last month and a half literally has felt like a year. And it's not even like I really had to do anything. That's the thing. It happened very easily and naturally as I changed my environment and just like reminded myself who I am, who I know I can be when I'm on my own. Living in my own place, having my own routine, I know how pivotal like I know how much that changes me so coming here like it just started to happen so naturally versus like being back home and journaling often trying to like I don't know force myself to become who I like wanted to become it felt very forceful but it wasn't happening like no matter what I did and then I just changed my environment and it's happening so naturally and it feels like minimal effort you know I mean like I'm putting a lot of work into myself and my routine and my habits but it doesn't feel that way it feels very easy to do so like this is just the life that i'm living versus like let me try so hard to create this life that i want i don't know it's just it's a different 
frequency that I'm like operating on and things are happening a lot easier than they were for me a few months ago. And I mean, this has been the biggest change in my life in the past few months is moving. So it's very obvious that this, you know, had a huge impact um, on me already. But anyways, I just wanted to say that because I feel like, I, I feel like someone needs to hear that. It's so easy to get comfortable in your environment. That's the thing, I was very comfortable and I was starting to fear change, which I love change. So when I was staying at home and I was starting to fear change and the thought of moving out and being on my own actually started to become scary and I didn't want to do that. That was a red flag to me because I knew how beneficial all of that is for me. So I was like, the fact that I don't want to do it and I just want to stay comfortable and stay at home and stay small and stay at this standstill, like, why do I want to stay here? Like, it's a little bit, it's honestly yourself just trying to keep yourself safe. It's all that's happening there. You're not like lazy or less than or any, I don't know, stupid word you can come up with. You're just trying to keep yourself safe, but if you stay there for too long, it gets way too comfortable. And even for me, someone who loves and thrives off change and growth, like I was feeling comfortable and wanting to stay where I was. So yeah, a change in environment is huge and obviously scary, but it's so worth it. Like so, so insanely worth it. The growth I've seen in the last month and a half like that is all the proof that i need to be so excited for this you know year ahead and who i'm gonna become like that's something i kept saying like i i always say like within a month i'm like i'm so excited to see who i'll be in a month um and i'm feeling like that again like i'm feeling like yeah it's happening at the pace that feels natural to me personally but anyways i hope you guys are having like a great start to your year 2024 feels just, it feels like a big one. I'm sure you're feeling it. If you resonate with me, like there's been some energy shifts taking place. Comparing it to the like energy and the themes that were going on in 2023, I feel like it was very, it was very messy, chaotic, you know, like just, I feel like it was like closing up, well, what's the saying? Like tightening loose ends or closing up loose ends. I don't know if that's saying is, you know what I mean? Like I just felt like it was the year of like <clears throat> chaos and messy and just trying to figure things out to like have all the answers and clarity for 2024. Like it feels a lot more stable, but it is Sunday. So my lovely Sunday morning routine, which you saw a little bit of, I love this part of it because I really like this book I'm reading. So. Once I have my coffee, I like to sit here and read. I was reading Supernatural. Um, that one feels just a little bit more like a bedtime book though. I want to keep that book for nighttime and hopefully finish that book this month. But I started this book that I've just been reading, How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's like old, like there's a few things that just don't make sense in this day and age anymore, but it's still like the meaning behind it still makes sense so some of his examples are a little dated but like at the core his message is very very strong so i do recommend this book it's like i can't put it down it's a storybook every single chapter to prove his point <clears throat> he goes into like two to three stories and so reading it it's kind of like you can't put it down it's, it has that like storybook feel to it but you're learning and you're you know reading these real-time examples that he's talking about so it's a really fun book to read i didn't think it was going to be fun at all i was just like i have heard great things about this book i would like to read it see what's inside but it is a fun read to the point where i'm excited to read it every sunday morning with my coffee i'm not saying i'm going vegan because i'm not and for those of you who know I was vegan for five years. I want to consume way less animal products this year in a whole and way more diverse fruits and vegetables. For example, last night I made sweet potato and chickpeas. This is so good, so filling. This is my first time bringing my camera to the gym. I have it in my bag. <laughs> But it doesn't fit. This is not that discreet. So I think I'll just walk in like this.
first time filming in the gym and with filming in public I'm learning through doing because obviously I've heard this but I didn't take it serious um no one cares even the people that do care don't really care like to set up my camera and film myself and even just like set up the weights to do hip thrust like all that is so much especially when the gym's just like filled with men um i find girls just like let you do whatever and don't care men are always like watching and like i don't know i feel like this like weird pressure when there's men around then on top of that out of camera ad filming myself um plenty of stairs like the whole time stairs did not stop the entire time but everyone was still doing their workout you know like they're just like a human being who's like oh that girl's filming herself i want to look for a second because that's out of the ordinary and then they go back to their workout and like it's just not that serious just an irrational fear so if you have the same irrational fear like people might stare the entire time but it doesn't mean they necessarily like care or are actively thinking about it you know, even if they are who cares anyways this is my first grocery haul without fan. <laughs> without fan. but like just taking into account like just feeding myself i need to remember how to just like feed myself i've been making way too much coffee every morning because i'm just used to making coffee for two but anyways i was out of olive oil so i got that usually okay so i got everything to make salads for lunch i'll do like quinoa and then a bunch of veggies usually i get a chicken like a rotisserie chicken to add on top i didn't because i want to just see if adding chickpeas lentils um quinoa like just making it a little more dense if i will still feel full and um i'm not necessarily tracking calories but i do i want to like i hope i'm getting in enough protein broccoli cucumber for the salad bok choy so fun i love bok choy and um <clears throat> shiitake mushrooms i think i might make like a veggie a veggie soup because i also got lentils so like veggie broth shiitake mushrooms bok choy lentils i feel like that would just be such a yummy soup potatoes I think I'm gonna make that tonight. Have it tonight and then I'll also have it for the week. That actually sounds really good. I didn't even like properly plan that meal. I just got random things. And then two more cans of chickpeas. And then I got some eggs. One thing I like rediscovered is um, hard boiled eggs. Oh my God. Like I just always think like eggs in the morning with bread, but just like a hard boiled egg or two hard boiled eggs like midday is so yummy. So Van taught me that you're not supposed to blend bananas with blueberries because something in the banana decreases the amount of antioxidants in the blueberries or something. Like it lessens the health benefits from blueberries when you blend them together. Um, that sucks. That's really unfortunate. But that's not stopping me is basically what I'm trying to say. That's like information I wish I didn't know, but even knowing, I'm not gonna change. Blueberry and banana is just like, I don't know, it's top tier. Like I'm, I'm just not gonna change my ways, you know? We also got this new protein powder that's, love this packaging, first of all. Um, but I'm excited to try. There's a bunch of, it's plant protein with a bunch of mushrooms in it. So there's cordyceps, lion's mane, chaga, reishi, and turkey tail. All the mushrooms that we need. Yum! Okay, so I know I was gonna, I said I was gonna make that soup tonight, but that just seemed like way too much work. And I already had these sweet potatoes and chickpeas cooked. And this might just be my new favorite meal. I baked sweet potatoes with chickpeas and then I pan fried zucchini and bell peppers. I put a bed of lettuce and then put the cooked veggies on top, cubed like tiny little cubes of aged cheddar, basil, and then salsa matcha from my mom's hot sauce company. That shit is 
so fucking good just like chili oil with little crunchy there's like peanuts it's amazing sprinkle that on top and then just mix it all together and then a side of bread like nice like bakery bread you know this <laughs> this is insane this is like i'm remembering just like how you have to be a little creative when you are eating more plant-based literally just by adding the basil it brings this whole dish to another level okay i'm gonna i'm gonna enjoy this and literally have a religious experience <laughs> time for one of my favorite parts of the night favorite part of sunday nights which is plan my week especially with having new goals and new things that i'm working towards one thing i'm trying to do is see what didn't work the week before and see if it's a discipline problem or if it's just not working with my schedule and like how i can pivot the weekly plan so that i do everything that I want to do and hit all my goals. So one thing I noticed last week was I planned all my workouts for the morning and I only ended up doing about half of them. So, and the problem being I wasn't waking up early enough. Maybe only do like two morning workouts and the rest be after work. Tomorrow I'm gonna do Pilates from home before work. I can do it. I just need to wake up earlier. I wake up so exhausted every single morning. As if like it feels like I'm waking up at 5 a.m. But I'm like trying to get out of bed at like 8, 8.30. It's so hard to get out of bed. That's like a huge one for me. Also, since the new year, it's been a lot easier to do this because I planned out, I planned out my yearly goals and I split it up into a bunch of different things that I'm working on or working towards. Example, career, finances, health and fitness, personal development, um, relationships, etc. And I wrote those big goals out for the year, but I also broke it down by quarter. And then by quarter, I broke it down, like what does that look like per week? So breaking it down that way and then making a weekly plan feels a lot better because I'm not just like guessing. You know, I'm not just like, oh, let me do this many workouts and let me work on this and let me try to do this. It's like I know the overall objective that I'm working towards. So it's a lot easier to make a weekly plan that is going to help me reach my quarterly goals, which then is gonna help me reach my yearly goals. So yeah, I'm just gonna open that up, refresh my weekly goals. Thanks for watching.